Aloha and welcome. I am Unit E, and thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to take a look at something different than my normal uh, Roland products, and this is the Midronome. This was sent to me by the Midronome team, I believe over in Sweden. It's a great new product to be the MIDI master for your setup in your studio or even in a live rig. Before we get into all it can do, let's go ahead and take a look at its inputs and outputs. First off, on the back side, you have a USB. Now it says power only, but this is in a prototype. The final product will transmit MIDI to your DAW or into your computer through a clock signal. You also get a pedal input. This allows you to put in a pedal, either a momentary or a sustained pedal to use for different functions that you can set up that we'll take a look at. In my demonstrations, I will be using the MXR tap tempo to start and stop the midronome. Here you have two MIDI outputs. You have a switch between headphone or line out, and you have your audio output to send a click track. Over here on the right side of the box, you will find a 3.5 millimeter mono TS output for sending clock signal to your Euro rack system. All right, now that we know its ins and outs, let's take a look at how it works. All right, now let's take a look at how I have it set up in my studio and use it here. First off, I have the USB supplying power. I have my tap tempo input for my pedal input to start and stop. I have one MIDI output going to a MIDI quadra through, so a MIDI splitter going to multiple instruments that we'll discuss later, and another MIDI output going to my tr 8 drum machine so I can have a separate start stop for my drum machine. I don't have the CV hooked up to my Eurorack at the moment because it is currently unpatched, but it does a great job at sending clock pulses to your modular rack. Within the settings, you can change your pulses per quarter note, and we'll discuss what all those are as we come up to them. First off, let's look at the face here and how it's set up. You do have a setup button, which is your menu. You have a tap tempo to tap in any new tempo at any time, like so. You have a giant dial, which allows you to be the master clock. You have a LED here that flashes your measures, green being the one, the reds being the two, three, and four. And you can increase the amount of beats per measure if you like, that is a menu option. You can lock it so it doesn't accidentally get nudged or moved. You have a start stop and a mute of muting the audio out click track. There's all your controls on top. Very simple. Now let's look at the setup. Pressing setup will bring you into your menu or setup mode. The first one you're looking at is the volume of click track one. You could set that to one to nine by simply pressing the giant button to enter into your values turning it to your correct value that you would like and hitting the button to enter. The next one is volume two of a second click track or a second click volume. After that, you have your sound for click one and your sound for click two. Then your next one is your bar. This is where I was saying you have your count of beats per bar. Now, traditionally you have it set to four beats a bar, but it, you can go all the way from one to 99. We'll keep it at four. After bar, you get your input. Now this is that pedal input back here. This is how you decide what mode it will be in. Let's take a look. You have off, so it doesn't do anything. You have PED for pedal, so you can have a pedal input. You have SYN, which allows the input to sync to the DAW plugin audio output. So if you have audio output coming from your DAW audio interface, you could send it into the pedal and sync it that way. You also have pad, which can be a drum pad that sends a trigger. Or this PAD, which is a drum pad with a time signature detection. So with this drum pad, you can make a new time signature for the midronome to dictate. We will leave it on pedal for me because that's what it is going to be used for. And then go back by confirming. After input, if you set to pedal, this PED pedal setting will show up. This is your pedal function. 
you can set it to mute and unmute the audio going out. So if you need to mute and unmute your audio click track, you can set it to play and stop like the play stop button here. So this can be done with your feet if your hands are busy. You get a tap to do tap tempo with it, which is also nice if you need to readjust your tempo and playing live. And those are your functions. I want it for play and stop. Oh, after pedal, you get CU, or this is going to be CV, really, in the alphabet for this usage. This is CVT. And what this is is CV type. Over here on the side of your 3.5 millimeter output, you can choose what type you want that to be. On, well, of course, you have off if you're not using it, but on would be you're sending a CV clock is always on, so the clock is always being sent. Play is CV clock will send when you hit the play button and when the play button is lit and only when it is lit. So when you stop, it stops sending the clock. This is useful for sending also the start and stop signal to a lot of your modules. And then there is DIN, which is a DIN sync 24 output mode if you need that mode. Very handy. I was using it for on or sorry for play. And I was also sending the play pause or play stop. CV1 and CV2, these are your parts per quarter note. Okay, and these go 1 to 24 pulses per quarter note. Okay, this will not show up if it is not set to on or play or if CVT is set to off. You have play, so you could set up your play button here, which is a nice feature that I really enjoyed that they brought in because. I do enjoy hitting play and having everything sync at once, but what they allowed me to do is in here you can go to initially both, which when you hit play, it sends a play or a stop or pause signal out both of the MIDI outputs at the same time. If you turn it to one, then it only sends it out to one MIDI port one sending out. Do it separately, but it will send out the clock. It just won't send out a play signal. That is one, so only one and only one output will do it. You can have SEP or separate. This is the one I like because now the play pause starts and stops this output. And now the mute has been turned into a second play and pause for this MIDI output. This allows me to start and stop my drums and then all my melodic content separately in my studio setup. This is my preferred way. Thank you very much for getting that in there, guys. I really enjoyed that. So I'm going to confirm that's how I use my play button. Then the last one is the brightness, of course, of the display. You can have it very bright to very dim. Keep it on dim, it picks it up nicely. Those are all your main setup menu items. There are deeper things, but you don't need to get into those because those are just those advanced setups. Maybe another video will cover those. Go ahead and hit setup to exit, and you'll be back at your tempo. Now let's see it in action. All right, looking at the studio now, I want to show you how I have it set up. Now, something to keep in mind if you're going to go right angles out of the metronome is that those five pins, the little arc, are on top. So keep that in mind with the angle. Uh, I sent my left one out this way. It wasn't the right way. So what's going to happen is when I hit this play start stop, it's actually going to start the MC707 in the melodic stuff. And the mute will do the drums. They're just switch control wise, but they are going out to separate outputs each. So when you see me hit the mute, it's going to start my drums first, and then I'll play in the melodic stuff after. And you'll see how everything here uh, with the boutiques, the four boutiques here, a JD-08, JX-08, the SEO-2, and the JU-06A by Roland. The MX-1 is back here. I know it's can't see it really, but I'll have that to bring my channels in and out. And then I'll just uh, be doing the sequencing of all those are from the 707, so they're receiving that MIDI and the TR-8S will be on it as well. Also, a nice added function of this is if you happen to drift out of time on something, you can hold the play button of either one for one second or longer, and it, on the next bar, it will send a resync signal to kind of reset it. So we're going to give this a go and see what happens. We'll start our drums up first. Hopefully you're hearing that okay. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and add in the melodic stuff. Just simple, the SEO2 playing a little 
thing being affected by the MX-1 here, I've layered it with a sound on the MC-707 that is sending the MIDI signal as well to send the sequence to the SEO-2. We'll go ahead and bring in the JX. That's our JX right here, 08. Just a simple horn. And then we'll bring in our JU, some pads. And then finally, let's bring in the JD-08 for the bass line. And let's hit that there. So everything here is controlled. I can stop my drums at any time. And then ready. Back in on time with everything else. We can solo the drums. And then bring them back in. Just like that. There you go. That's in action in my studio here. I can incorporate it with a whole lot more. Uh, but I just want to keep it compact for this nice video to show you how it works so well. All right, let's get back down into it. All right, I also wanted to show you that function of having the tap tempo or a start stop on a pedal input. Now, when you do split the play button, it will only affect the original play button. I cannot have it affect both of these at the same time unless I set my play to be both. Otherwise, when I do press it, it just fires off the play button and I would have to do the drums myself. And when I stop, it does only stop the play. So keep that in mind when using this, if you are separating the play button in between the play and the mute and using a pedal input to do any start stop of the midronome, this will only affect that side. I hope you enjoyed this video and it got your interest in the midronome. I'll leave links in the description for this product. It was funded on Kickstarter, so we should see it soon. Uh, congratulations on that. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up to really spread the word about this great product. Also, subscribe if you can and give it a ring to that bell to be notified when I set up some new videos. Once again, my name is Unit E, and thanks for watching.